The Mercedes team was strictly controlled with visual signals from Neubauer in the pits. When we had 30 seconds ahead of the rest of the field, they put out REG, which meant regulari. But the other drivers weren't thinking of winning. They were trying to be the first non-Mercedes, which was a rather depressive attitude, really. Fangio and Moss are lapping at over 121 miles per hour. The pace is turning. Castellotti pushes the Lancia, its engine wrecked. A Maserati comes into the pits with a chronic misfire. The young driver, Luigi Musso, can only wait patiently. Even a Mercedes is in trouble. It is Carl Klings, and it is losing oil from a fractured pipe. The engine is too badly damaged to continue. Is the team mortal after all? Musso had been well placed, but his Maserati has damaged valve gear. He restarts, but is now two laps behind the leader, Fangio, with Sterling Moss, as ever, close behind. I would follow Fangio as close as I could, and I mean, we were known, we were christened in one of the papers as being the train, because I'd be within a meter or so of him. Neubauer didn't like it, and he said, you know, if he makes a mistake, you're going to be caught up in it. I said, Fangio doesn't make mistakes. I mean, Fangio was, and I think still is, the greatest driver that's ever driven. Winning the 1955 Belgian Grand Prix, Moss being a few yards behind. The car Fangio drove to victory at Spa, chassis number eight, is preserved by Mercedes. John Watson drove it at Hockenheim, a course he knows well, but not from the cockpit of a front-engined car. It's strange to see corners so far away from the front wheels. That's my initial impression. I'm much more accustomed to being almost between the front wheels now. I'm eight feet back, and it's quite different, quite a different feel. It's obviously a car from a period of motor racing where the size of the tires limit very much the amount of grip that you do have. So I believe that if uh, you took this car, for example, and fitted a modern wheel and tire and, and altered the suspension to suit, that in fact the road holding would be of a very high order indeed. Tires and brakes are the great advance in motor racing in the last 30 years. And certainly, if you're driving the car today, when I put my foot in the brake, I wonder when they're going to start working. Now I haven't been using maximum revs because it's a very valuable piece of equipment, but at the point where I was slipping off, it was really beginning to go, and it would be interesting to see what would happen if you were able to, in fact, run it up to its limit, which eventually, I believe, was about 9,000 RPM. So remember, you've got the engine in front of you, and I noticed just in the few laps I was driving the car that the heat from the engine and the gearbox, which is virtually between my legs, the heat soaking through, and with these overalls on, in those few laps, I felt quite warm. So three hours or three and a half hours around Monaco, I would have thought would have been pretty demanding of any driver. It's very difficult for a modern-day driver to equate with what drivers were doing 30-odd years ago. It's, it's an enormous difference between the modern-day car and this particular vehicle. I think the strength the company had in its engineering department, its R&D department, enabled the company to build racing cars that were, first of all, competitive. They were competitive. But I think that other cars were competitive at that period also. What they didn't have, and what the Mercedes does have, is this fantastic inbuilt strength and reliability. It could be punished all day and still be there at the end. Another end in sight was the carefree attitude to what was, and always had been, a dangerous sport. Straw bales would not contain cars doing 180, which were the speeds at Spa in 1955, with the spectators unprotected as on nearly all circuits. Until at Le Mans, 11th of June, 1955, at precisely 1829, Pierre Levy crashed and his engine hurtled into a crowded enclosure. Levy and 82 spectators were killed, many others injured. The disaster was the worst in the history of motor racing and called the whole ethos of the sport into question. Well, 55 Le Mans did an enormous amount of damage and obviously you can understand why. I mean, it stopped racing altogether, I think, in, in Switzerland and, and a lot of other things were changed. Of course, they were, demands were made and I think quite correctly. Levy had been driving a Mercedes. 
the rest of the team was withdrawn. But the blazing wreckage signaled the end of Mercedes motor racing commitment. One of the main reasons to stop was this terrific accident, which turned, at least in Germany, everything against racing. So it said, we've won everything. We don't go to race against public opinion. We'll stop. At a sad ceremony at Stuttgart, when the 1955 season closed, the W196 cars were retired and the racing department, which had won nine Grand Prix in only two seasons, was disbanded. With the withdrawal of Mercedes, a vacuum was created which remained unfilled until the Monaco Grand Prix of 1957. Enzio Ferrari had fallen out with Fangio, and the world champion had left in a huff. Maseratis were still competing, but the Bologna firm was in deep financial trouble, and the 250Fs outmoded. But Fangio would take one to his fifth championship. Here, Fangio is harried by a British car, a van wall. Van walls had been developed at enormous cost by the industrialist Tony van der Vel. It had a four-cylinder engine out of Norton by Rolls-Royce. The chassis was the work of the young Colin Chapman and the body by Frank Costa. But change was in the air and would lead to revolution. The revolutionary, John Cooper. But the instrument of his revolution was at that moment powered by an obscure Australian, Jack Brabham. Cooper had built 500cc Formula 3 cars. To get into Formula 1, Cooper only needed a competitive engine. He found one. It was used to power portable fire pumps. It was light and powerful. All it required was four wheels. It got them, and the ex-fire pump was to set the world of Grand Prix ablaze. <laughs> 